Now we define the definition of a continuous function. We know what it means that f is continuous in some value of in its domain, but now we'll call f continuous if f is continuous in any element in its domain. So f is continuous if and only if the limit of x approaching a of fx equals fa for all a in the domain of f. Well, in practice, you will find many functions that are continuous, like polynomials, rational functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, cosinus, sinus, tangent, absolute values. These are all continuous functions. Well, as a theorem, we will not prove this, so there's no proof to this. So we may, once we have continuous functions, we may combine functions in order to create new continuous functions. So suppose that f is defined on some interval i and g is some function defined on an interval, on the same interval, then we may construct the sum of the two functions and the difference of the two functions and the product of the two fun functions and f divided by g if only if g is not equal to zero on on i yeah so this is more the usual constructs that we discussed in the first lecture then each of these functions are continuous on the respective domain so and also we can look at the composition of f with g and this can be done if only the range of the function g is contained in the domain of f then actually what we get is that f through g so the composition of f with g is also continuous so basically if we uh, make a composition of two continuous function then what we're left with is a continuous function So now focus on the statement that fx equals the tangent of x is continuous. But it's not quite obvious, right? So if we look at the graph, then we see that there are some issues there, right? At minus half pi and a half pi, then we see some erratic behavior of the function f around these values. What about x equals to a half pi, for instance? Yeah, so we see that actually according to our former definitions of f being continuous that we can draw the graph of a function in one line doesn't hold here yeah, so f seems quite discontinuous right uh, but recall that actually this definition was kind of intuitive and we assumed a closed interval but here is not a closed interval the domain of the function is not a closed interval look again at the definition so f is a continuous function, is continuous at some value a, then we would, should have that the limit of x approaching a, fx, should be equal to the f of a. So implicitly in this definition, there is the statement that a should belong to the domain of f. But this is of course not true for a equal to a half pi, a half pi is not contained in the domain of f so there's no problem here whatsoever at these points minus half pi and a half pi things are not in the domain are not considered in the definition what are what points are considered in the definition well these are the c's for which we see a very regular behavior of the function 